Okay, so, so far the story we are telling you is we are saying, hey, if this is your, <coughs> this is your somitis there, right? And we said it is something like this, right? And we are saying here is your nodal code, this is your uh, neural tube, nodal code is sending the sonic hedgehog, sonic hedgehog coming here, and also sending no gain and no gain is blocking BMP right there, right? And this is what's saying you have primaxial and axial in center of the mobile phone, right? And we are saying that, so we did talk about this, uh, abaxial and primaxial, how the PAX3 is there, and we are saying that PAX3 activates either MyOD or MIP5, then MRF4 file, then myogen, and then we said muscle specific gene activity, right? So remember, we said this is our sclerotome. This is syndetome. Syndetome, right? And we are saying that this is going to give you tendon. And this is your cartilage. So what is happening, why it is becoming cartilage? We are saying that sonic hedgehog is there, sonic hedgehog only because we block the BMP, activate PAX1. So we have PAX1 there, right? So what PAX1 is doing? PAX1 is actually, so this becomes sclerodome, what PAX1 is doing? X1 activate SOX9. Okay. So PAX1 activate SOX9. SOX9 activate SOX5 and SOX6. And when the SOX5 and SOX6 are activated, they essentially lead to formation of cartilage. Okay, now what happened? Why this become tendon? What is there? Okay, so remember that sonic hedgehog is secreted here. We are saying here it was very, very, very less sonic hedgehog. Very less sonic hedgehog was there, right? So that means too much sonic hedgehog is here, so here also you should have very slight amount of sonic hedgehog in this area. Okay, so what happened, these, this area of the somite, which is myodome, the whole thing is myodome because it's giving different type of muscle. What it does, these myodome, so myodome starts secreting FGF. So myodomes start secreting FGF. So from here, from these myodomes, so myodomes start secreting FGF. So say this is FGF. So FGF start coming here. So FGF coming down here. Okay. So FGF start coming down. What FGF does? So FGF is coming here, what FGF does? FGF does multiple things. So FGF is coming in the cell beneath, above this. Now FGF high concentration here, low concentration here, right? Because FGF is going down. So what FGF is doing is, FGF, under the influence of FGF, these cells, uh, cells beneath, Myodome. They express P3. They start expressing P3. Okay. And 
E R M one. And what this does, they induce expression of squid axis. Square axis, and that square axis is square axis, and square axis induces tandem. Now, what is the function of tandem? A joint muscle with bone, right? So we are talking about muscle are here, cartilage is here. Tendon is here, so they are all kind of like sitting together from their coming. So that's how those we'll talk about bone formation also. And we know that vertebrae and all the four limbs they are also coming from these this type of the paraxial visitum, right? So we are going to talk about that. So this has now become tendon. Now what is happening then? So MTF is here also, right? MTF is going down, it should also reach here. Right? So it should make this also tendon. But here we have a uh, sonic hedgehog. Sonic hedgehog has activated SOX 9 and SOX 5 and SOX 6. Right? So actually, what happened, little bit sonic hedgehog is also reaching, reaching here, but not enough. But sonic hedgehog here is born in this area. Right? So what sonic hedgehog does. Sonic hedgehog itself can block, can block this FGF signal ring. That's the one thing it does. And then the other thing happened in this area where the sclerodome has to become SOX5 and SOX6 start expressing. SOX5 and SOX6, they also actually block FGF signaling, okay? So that's why this area become syndicate. So this is, throughout we are talking about like the great insult playing very important role, right? Whatever differentiation we are talking about, we are talking about a factory like for the neuron, we said motor neuron, you had, you know, very high sonic hedgehog, very less dorsalin and FGF, uh, the transforming growth factor signaling. So it's all how far where you are from the signaling center that is done. So what, what we are saying? We are saying that these myotomes which are developing, they start signaling FGF in the cells beneath them. And these cells beneath them, under the influence of FGF, because there is very less sonic hedgehog there, they start expressing P3 ERM1 and that induced expression of sclerosis and they become the tendon. Whereas the cell which were in the in this area, they have a lot of sonic hedgehog, they block BMP, and these cells start expressing PAX1. And what PAX1 does, PAX1 activates SOX9, that activates SOX56, and that leads to formation of cartilage. Then we are saying like why these cells are not influenced by FGF signaling. They are not influenced by FGF signaling because the sonic hedgehog is high among there. Sonic hedgehog can block the FGF signaling. Same way, activation of SOX5 and SOX6 in this area that also block the signaling of the sonic hedgehog. So this that's why this part remain as cartilage, this part become tandem, and we know why these things become the muscle cells, the myotome. Making sense? Okay, so talk to each other for a minute and we'll go for the
Any confusion? No, okay. So now we are going to talk about, we just talk about like the myotomes are special, specified, right? And then how from myotome you need to muscle fiber, right? So we are going to talk about myoblast. Actually, <coughs> oh, myoblast to muscle fiber. Myoblast to muscle fibers. Now. Again, same thing. These cells which were on the top, right? These cells start producing myogenic regulation, right? So, myotome cells produce myogenic regulation. Now, when these cells produce myogenic regulator. Therefore, cells are called myoblast. Okay, so what myoblasts are? Myoblasts are committed, they are committed precursors of muscle cells. They are committed. Okay. So their fate is to become the muscle. So if we say they are committed, if we say they are committed cells, that means, so let me go back a little bit explanation. So we have like stem cells. Okay. Stem cells can be pluripotent, right? And this stem cell, so this is a stem cell. This stem cell can divide, can give you two type of cells. These both can be stem cells, or a stem cell can divide, can give you a stem cell, and can give you another cell that is called pro Progenitor. Progenitor. Now this progenitor is a committed stem cell. So this is still a stem cell, but it's a committed stem cell. So it's not committed to a fate. Okay? So this stem cell, the progenitor, it can also divide multiple times, and then it differentiate. Then it differentiate, whatever it want to be. So these myoblasts, when I'm saying they're committed precursor, that means those are the progenitor cells. Making sense? So these are the progenitors. These are the progenitors for the muscle fiber. Now, so these myoblasts are produced, but we know that muscle does not work as individual cell. So what is there? So this myoblast is there. This myoblast does not work as muscle. So what happened? Many myoblasts come together. And these myoblasts, they fuse. This is one myoblast, this is another myoblast, this is another myoblast, they fuse. And when they fuse, they dissolve their membrane like this, they fuse their membrane, and they become a long fiber, okay? So what happened? That myoblast fuse to form a multinucleated, multinucleated 
मसल पर ओके सो in mars itself so this muscle fiber is actually a multi nucleated we used to call it muscle cell right because we say muscle cell but muscle cell is actually a muscle fiber that is formed by the fusion of many myoblasts and how that happen we'll talk okay but if you if you're looking for example in mice and that thing should be true for the human also at mice at bulk the total number of muscle fiber are actually the total number of muscle fiber in adult so when the mice is born it has all the muscle fiber which are the number of muscle fiber in the adult okay so now in first week what happened so that means mice is born with all the required muscle fiber right so in first week what happened in first week in first week after birth in mice what is happening so muscle fiber growth muscle fiber grow by the addition of myoblast so it can still grow by the addition of myoblast after one week what happened after one week the muscle fiber can grow increase in size not grow right muscle fiber muscle fiber increase in size and that is called growth <coughs> and repair from injury at that time there is no myoblast there okay so myoblasts are all used up within one week at that time there is another cell what we call those are the stem cell called or we'll talk about those called satellite cells are utilized so after one week the satellite cells are utilized for the muscle growth and the repair from the injury so just summing up we are saying that myoblasts those are produced those are the stem cells those are stem cells but those are committed precursor that's why we call them myoblasts and those are progenitor cells they will divide for some time and they will later differentiate into the muscle fiber now when we say muscle fiber we said muscle myoblast doesn't act as muscle it's a muscle fiber muscle fiber is formed by the fusion of various myoblasts coming together and then we are saying at the time of the birth of the mice so that is almost true for all the mammals that when the mouse is born it's born with all the muscle fiber numbers of the adult in first week after the birth the muscle can grow in size by the addition of myoblast so that means myoblast cells still there but after one week there is no more myoblast there the muscle growth and the repair from the injury that can happen because there are another cell called satellite cell are there and those satellite cells can fuse and increase the muscle size and repair the muscle how that happen we are going to talk right so now we are going to talk about how the muscle fiber formation takes place this is clear any confusion here okay okay so the myoblast fusion to muscle fiber this is a multi step process okay so what happened the first step is step number 1 the myoblast should come out of the cell cycle 
that is my blood should stop dividing. Okay, so what happened? Again, you had a precursor cell, and that precursor cell either was in a maxial or primaxial part of the myodome, right? So what happened? So this is your myodome, and you have all these cells right there. And these cells are receiving either sonic hedgehog signaling and or wind signaling. Two types of signaling they are receiving here, sonic hedgehog and or wind, depending on where you are, right? And what they are going to do, they start expressing myod or myth fiber. Okay. So now these cells, these cells were these were initially the cells of so initially before they express any myod or myth cell, we can tell them, name them as myotome cells. Right? These myotome cells, they start expressing myod and MIF5. At that time, we call them, these have become the myoblast. So they express those things and they become myoblast cells. Now, these are stem cells, right? So these are stem cells that precursor, but they are still dividing. So those are dividing myoblast cells. Making, making sense? Making sense? So they are multiplying, increasing their number. So they are dividing. So they are kind of like, they change their shape, kind of become like this. So these are multi-blind myoblasts, right? So they are divided. And then what happened, we know that muscle cells do not divide. And if these cells need to fuse with each other, these cells should stop multiplying. They should come out of the cell cycle, okay? So what happened at that time, the sonic, uh, the hedgehog signaling, I'm not saying sonic hedgehog, the hedgehog signaling the hedgehog signaling comes into play and what hedgehog signaling does it basically stops multiplication They stop multiplication. So these cells essentially they stop dividing. Making sense? And we know there can be amine hedgehog, there can be desert hedgehog, and there can be sonic hedgehog. All those signals can play over there. So then what happened? So that was the first step, right? They should come out of the cell cycle. And then what happened? That is the second. Now what they have to do is, they all have to align like this. They all have to align like this, right? They have to make a, they have to make a chain so that they can make a bigger fiber. Now what happened, second step, the myoblast, after they are coming out of the cell cycle, they secrete Fibronectin. Fibronectin on the extracellular matrix. So what happened? So right here the cell is there. I'm just trying for example one myoblast right here. This one myoblast it starts secreting fibronectin. So the fibronectin from here here, 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 so everywhere <coughs> this fibronectin is secreted. So 
travel napkin is made in these cells and there is secreted out from the cells. Okay. Now, what happens when they secrete the fibronectin, these cells actually also start expressing an integrin receptor on it. So what happens? They have secreted fibronectin and right here, these cells start expressing an integrin receptor. This is called uh, alpha 5 beta 1 beta 1 integrin. Now think about that, what they are doing. They are making, they themselves are making a sticky, secreting a sticky protein called fibronectin and they are making their own receptor right here so they can interact with fibronectin. Now this is the crucial step. If somehow you block the form or either secretion of fibronectin or you block the beta, uh, alpha 5 beta 1 integrin receptor formation, so the muscle development stops right there. So this is the critical step. So idea here is that you are kind of, when, when you build a house, you basically build kind of like, you dig something and then you put a lot of you know, concrete there and on that you make the house. The same thing is happening. These cells are kind of screening the fibronectin and they are anchoring to that fibronectin with this alpha 5 beta 1 integral. Okay? Now what happens? Then these cells are like this. Then third step is the alignment of myoblast in a chain. So they want to align themselves in a chain. So what happened? These cells are there. Let me draw another cell next to it so it will be more clear. So they are having alpha 5, beta 1, antigen. Then you have the another cell. So I'm, I will not draw this fibronectin there, right? So then what happened? There's another cell that is coming here. This is another myoblast. Then you have another myoblast there. So this is essentially what, you are, what is happening is cell alignment. But how does these cells know that you are a myoblast, you are a myoblast, and you are a myoblast? Because only the myoblast should come and basically align with each other, right? So what happened? These cells, the myoblast, they start expressing muscle specific cat head. Muscle specific cat head. We call it M cat head. And other M cams. MCAM is muscle cell adhesion molecules. Okay, so they start expressing MCAMs. Now, the MCAMs are there. These are your M cat heading and M cats. Now, only myoblasts are expressing M cat heading or M cam, so only they can come and align together. Making sense so far? Now, what is happening? Now they have. They have come together, but their membrane need to be fused, right? And what is the most common thing we heard about membrane fusion, right from the first 
acrosome reaction, what should be there, which cause all those things. Calcium. So the calcium is the key role there, everywhere, where our membrane fusion is taking place. So what happened, the, the third step is membrane fusion. And when membrane fusion occurs, what is happening, that you are having calcium enters into the myoblast and cause membrane fusion. But remember, whenever membrane fusion took place, even in the spermatogenesis also, we said there were some fusogenic proteins, right? In the case of the human sperm, what was the name of that? Izumo, right? Izumo and Zuno come together, right? So Izumo was on the sperm head that was responsible for the membrane fusion. So same way on the muscle, you have these myoblasts, you have the proteins which are responsible for the membrane fusion. So right here, The proteins are there. So these proteins are responsible for membrane fusion, and these proteins are called melatrins. So melatrin proteins are there. These melatrin are responsible for membrane fusion. So melatonin, what they do? Melatonin, they aid membrane fusion. Now the membrane fusion has taken place. So what is going to happen? You are going to have a cell like this, and this membrane is fused. You have another cell, another cell like this. So just I'm going to show you three cells. So this is the membrane fusion has taken place. It has become like this. Making sense? Now, what is happening? So, at that time when this thing is happening, when the membrane fusion takes place, at that time, so this is step four. Lineage, lineage, specification occurs. Linear specification occurs. What is that? So we had PAX3. What PAX3 has done? PAX3 has either activated MyoD or MIF5. Right? When this was there, these cells were called myoblast, right? Those myoblasts are proliferating, and then we said sonic hedgehog, uh, the hedgehog signaling comes there, they take out them from the cell cycle and they start the fusion process. But they are still, they were still myoblast, right? Now you have to make them, hey, you are no more myoblast, you are in the lineage of the muscle fiber. So that means you should start making the muscle fiber specific gene. And what happened there? At this stage, when the when this membrane fusion occur, the next step occur, we have myogenin myogenin expression occur, and when myogenic expression occur, that cause activation of <coughs> muscle specific genes. So far it is okay. <clears throat> so now, now the muscle specific genes have 
activated. Now it's going to make all those muscle specific troponins and all those things and, and myosin, everything which is required for muscle contraction, right? So now, we have to stabilize these membranes. That's the next step, step number four. Uh, step number four was this, step number five. Stabilization of membrane. This membrane that is fused, that need to be stabilized so that it can stay there, right? So then, and also there can be some breakdown, there can be some, you know, fracture in the membrane, some rupture in the membrane, so you need to seal it and heal it, right? So I will say stabilization of membrane, and I will say sealing. So essentially you seal everything. And that is done by proteins here. So two proteins are going to come there, and these proteins will be called the sealing protein, which are going to seal those, and those are Myoferlin, ferlin, M E R L I N, myoferlin, and this ferlin. These two proteins, they are the sealing proteins. Sealing proteins. They are going to seal, seal the membrane so the membrane is perfectly sealed. So myoferlins and this ferlin. What they do? How the sealing occur? You have the membrane in the membrane, what is it? Phospholipid, right? So you have to stabilize the phospholipid. So what they do? They stabilize membrane phospholipid. So far it is okay. I know it's getting too much complex, but I'll come back to every step again, right? So first explain every step. Then, five. Number six is the growth. So the fiber is now made, now you have to grow it, right? Few of the myoblasts come together, but now you have to grow. You have to make the long, big muscle fiber. So the growth of the fiber, of the myofiber. So it's no more a myoblast. This is a myofiber now, right? Because the myoblast has come and fused with this. So what happened? So for example, this is I'm just drawing it smaller. So this is a myofiber, okay? So this myofiber can grow only if it tell other myoblasts to come to it, right? Which are surrounding there, which are lying here and there. So what happened, they start, this myofiber secretes, secretes interleukin-4. Interleukin-4, also called IL-4. This is the same molecule which is used in the immunity and all those things, interleukin-4. And what interleukin-4 does, Interleukin-4 attracts other myoblasts. So right here was another myoblast. So this was the another myoblast right here. Another myoblast right here, another myoblast here. So it attracts them. So this myoblast come here and essentially fuses. Fuse, so myoblast fuses. Myoblast fusion takes place. And this fusion, kind of increase the length of the myofiber. So myofiber grow there. Making sense so far? And then how many how many myofibers should be there? How many muscle fibers should be there? One, two, ten, twenty, right? So the number of myofiber, that's the next uh, five, this was six and this is the seven regulation of number of myofiber. And that is done by myostatin. Myostatin secreted by 
muscle fiber. And this is a negative, negative regulator. So if you secrete more myofiber, you will have less myofibers. Myostatin, if you secrete more myostatin, you will have less myofibers. So if you want to have more muscle fiber, you need to decrease the myostatin. Making sense? So it's a negative regulator of the muscle fiber. More myostatin, less mu muscle fiber. Less myostatin, more muscle fiber. And actually, the mutation in the myostatin that can, so mutation is too busy. I will, I'll explain everything, so don't worry if it is anywhere it's confusing, I'll go back, okay? Mutation in myostatin can cause a phenotype called Herculean. Herculean means you are like Hercules. Hercules is like, yeah, that's what it is. You have the muscle, the huge muscle mass like this. You'll be like kind of really Hercules. Now, in the dogs, there is a breed called Whiplet. You might have heard of the Whiplet. It's a racing dog. So the racing dog, they have that Whiplet breed. So those dogs can have stamina, endure, endurance, and all the muscle power because they are heterozygote for this myostatin. Homozygote is not good. If, if, you, if you take out completely, you will be essentially a muscle mass, like you will not be really able to do anything. So you need to have that balance. So heterozygous mutation for this myostatin, they produce really good agility and all those. And you might have heard many, you might be knowing, you, you, you're thrilled, right? You might have heard like many, many, you know, pharmacies saying build more muscle and they're talking about myostatin somehow, they can inhibit myostatin and all those things. That cannot happen, but that's, <laughs> that's what they claim. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, let me go back. So this was about how it happened. Let me go back. So we are saying that we are talking about from myoblast to muscle fiber. And we are saying myoblast to muscle fiber can happen only if the myoblast, they should come out of the cell cycle. They should stop dividing. And we are saying that you have the PAX3 or PAX3 there. Either you get myoD or MIP5 activation and you become a committed precursor or progenitor and you call it myoblast. Myoblasts are dividing, they are dividing and they should come out of the cell cycle. And we said sonic hedgehog come there, and not sonic hedgehog, the hedgehog signaling come there, and hedgehog signaling take it out of the cell cycle. Now they stop doing anymore. And then they need to come and they need to align together. And how that happened? We said that myoblast, they start secreting fibronectin in the extracellular matrix. So it's kind of providing them a space where they are going to sit down. And then these myoblasts, they start expressing it integrin receptor or integrin alpha 5, beta 1. And with that, they can actually talk with fibronectin and kind of settle, anchor the matrix, right? So once the matrix is anchored, what they need, they need to align. So more cells should come there and they start aligning together. And how that aligning can occur? That aligning can occur only if they are having something on their membrane, so they can recognize each other. And we said they can recognize each other because they have muscle specific cat herring. We call them M cat herring. So myoblasts start expressing M cat herring. And also they start expressing muscle cell addition molecule called M cams. So they tell that only myoblast cells are coming together, no other cell is there. So that's how most of the cells recognize them. So remember we said the the neural tube is formed because they have n cat herring and the epidermis has e cat herring so they know which which one is expressing what right so same way they have the muscle cat herring and they have muscle cell region molecules so they can recognize each other and then when they have aligned together they need to fuse and we know that the membrane fusion is always accomplished by the calcium ion so these cells have a lot of calcium channel through which the calcium start getting into the cell and that starts the process of membrane fusion. And we know that membrane fusion also requires some fusogenic proteins. And in the case of the muscle, they have melting protein expressed on those, 
and these medicine proteins aid in the membrane diffusion. So once the fusion has taken place, at that time these cells realize, hey, they are no more myoblasts because they are no more single nucleus containing dividing cell, right? At that time, the linear specification occurred. So these cells which were expressing either myoD or MIF5, they start expressing myogenin, and then myogenin tell them to start expressing other muscle specific genes so they can make muscle specific proteins, right? So once the lineage is specified, then you need to stabilize the membrane. You need to plug the holes in the membrane, whatever kinks are there, you need to seal it. And then we are saying two proteins called dysferrin and uh, myoferrin, these two proteins come together and these proteins essentially seal the membrane. So once the membrane is sealed, you have an initial small myofibril is established. Now you need to grow this myofibril or muscle fiber. And what you do, you start secreting interleukin-4. And interleukin-4, it starts attacking other myoblast cells, and these myoblast cells come and start fusing with this tube, and this muscle fiber starts growing. And then we are saying how many muscle fibers need to be made that is also controlled by these myofibers. They start secreting a, a chemical called, a factor called myostatin. Myostatin is a negative regulator of number of muscle fibers. So if, if, the, if there's a need for more muscle fiber, you will not have a myostatin. If you, if you need less muscle fiber, you will secrete myostatin, so it's a negative regulator. And we are saying that, that they tell you how many muscle fiber are there, and then there's the mutation in myostatin that can give you a Herculean phenotype, will have huge muscle mass, and we also said that in dogs and all those things, there can be certain breeds which are used for it. For example, the black breeds, they are heterozygous for the myostatin. And we said homozygous is not that beneficial. It's the heterozygous that is more beneficial. So talk to each other and make sure that every step is clear. Confusing. No. Okay. So now, so all those progenitors are gone, right? So you know that myoblasts they will all fuse within one week of the birth. They will all fuse, right? Now, you can you can do some exercises when you're you know grown up. You can become a muscle man, right? You can increase the the size of the muscle. Or muscles have some little, you know, capability of regeneration also. Like if there's muscle injury, muscle can heal, right? And it's not like you can take out the whole muscle and muscle, but little ability is there. So all that muscle growth or healing that occur in the muscle of the injury is because of a cell called satellite cell. And we're going to talk about those cells. Satellite cells. Now, satellite cells, 
are unfused muscle progenitors. And from where they will be coming? What you what you can think of, we know about that from where they're coming. Yeah. No, but which part of the somite? Oh, uh, Dermomyotons. Yeah. So they are in dermomyotons. <laughs> so they are unfused muscle fiber. They express, as we know, PAX3 and PAX7. Now, they are, so where they are present? They are unfused. So for example, if this is a muscle fiber right here, this is the muscle fiber. And they will be actually present alongside the muscle fiber, but not attached. So they are present alongside the muscle fiber right here. So this will be a separate. So this is a separate cell. Again, from where they are coming? They are coming from central dermal myotome. Right. So, what is there so special about these cells? These cells express PAX3 and PAX7. So, if you have both PAX3 and PAX7 together, PAX3, PAX7 expression that inhibits myodine. That inhibits myodine. Now, if you're saying that inhibits myodine, then MIF5 can be present there, right? So satellite cell, they are unfused muscle progenitors. That means they are stem cells, still stem cells, but more differentiated stem cells, right? So now these progenitors, they can divide, give more satellite cell, I'm just writing satellite cell as SC. Or they can divide, or they can divide to give more stem cell and a comitate or comitate muscle cell. And that muscle cell, which is will be comitate cell, that's going to fuse with the muscle fiber, right? And grow in the size. So how that can happen? So the cell, which are satellite cell, they will be expressing PAX3, PAX7. And the cell that is going to become committed muscle cell, that is going to express PAX3, also PAX7, but that will also express MIF. Five. We know that MIF5 means you are going to be a myoblast, right? So how that happens? So these cells, when they are there, this cell is here. So satellite cell, what they have in it? They have, I'm talking about satellite cell, they have back three. They have back seven. If that is there, no no myoti. No. That means no myoti. Okay. They also express micro RNA. 489. So what are microRNA? We did talk a little bit.
microRNA, we should know it. MicroRNA are, uh, I think, microRNA are post transcriptional regulators of the protein levels. They can, their, their genes are producing us. They, we, are, we are part of that, you know. So microRNA-489, so what microRNA can do? MicroRNA regulates the level of protein by two ways. Number one, in most of the cases that normally happen in the mammals, they bind to the messenger RNA and they stop, they hold the translation of particular protein. So they stop the translation. So when the protein is not translated, the protein level goes down. So that's the more most common way in which microRNA work. In less common way, they can bind to the mRNA and they can basically cause the micro mRNA degradation. That's very rare. So two, two ways, right? MicroRNA, number one, inhibit translation. That's the most common way. Second way is degrade mRNA. And that's actually rare for the microRNA to work in that way. So microRNA mostly works by yeah. protein translation inhibition. Okay, so microRNA-489, what it does, it actually, microRNA-489 binds to mRNA of MIF-5 and inhibit translation. So, if microRNA-489 is there, that means no MIF-5 either. So there is neither MyoD nor MIF-5, so they cannot become a myoblast, right? So they will stay as stem cells. Making sense so far? So now what can happen? Like every cell, Remember, we have been talking this thing for a long time, right from base T. We said base T is on one side. So they can divide in two ways. So let's see this cell divide. This cell divide, it can give it two cells, and those two cells can have PAX3, PAX7, and microRNA-489. PAX3, PAX7, microRNA. 489. So this is symmetric division. That's the one way it can divide, right? So in this way, it will stay as stem cell because there is no PAX3, no PAX7. Making sense? There is PAX3, PAX7, and there is also microRNA. So therefore, no myoD, no MIF5. Right? Or it can divide in a way, it can divide in a way what we call asymmetric. It can divide asymmetric way that one cell get PAX3, PAX7, and microRNA 489, but other cell get only PAX3 and PAX7. So if this cell is dividing in a way that has PAX3 and PAX7, but it has no microRNA-489, it will express MIF-5, right? So this cell will now express, can express MIF-5. If it can express MIF-5, that means a myoblast. Making sense?
So what we are saying, we are saying that these cells, the cell to cell, they are stem cells. They are stem cells, but they can divide symmetrically and asymmetrically. They can divide to give two stem cells, or they can divide to give one stem cell and one myoblast, right? And we are saying that can happen because these cells express PAX3, PAX7, and microRNA 489. PAX3, PAX7 inhibit myoD, and my, uh, microRNA 489 inhibit the translation of MIF5. So neither myoD nor MIF5, so it cannot become muscle, right? It cannot become myoblast. But it, if it divides asymmetrically, that one cell get PAX3, PAX7, and micro 489 other cell just get PAX3, PAX7. So this cell, PAX3, PAX7, inhibit myoD, but there is no microRNA 489 here. So this cell is going to give MIF5. So that means this cell is going to become the muscle. And that's how, if this cell divide in a way like this, so say this cell is now no microRNA, right? So this cell will join with the muscle, increase the muscle. Whereas this cell will still stay, will stay as stem cell, right? So it will keep there, keep on dividing again and adding more and more cells there. Making sense? Any doubt here? So you can talk to each other for a minute, then we can basically finish this thing. Okay, so we will meet after Thanksgiving and we will have an exam on that day, right? And we will meet after the Thanksgiving. Exams with uh, the previous topic, basically, not these. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah.